Welcome back to a drizzly and wet Athens to Atlanta. Philip Sutherland is addicted to the lead. When Matt Steele and Chris Kaiser float away from the pack, Sutherland decides to jump too. Peter Doucet and the stripes and everyone else takes the bait and picks up the pace. Same story, some new faces. A trio of rabbits test the legs of the main field again. This break, however, is not the real thing. And Chris Kaiser, the number three man in this group, can sense it. The peloton is quicker to respond to them, knowing that the later into the skate a break happens, the better odds of having it stick. But Chris will not give in before making the chasers suffer just a little bit more. Hey, you found somebody, Helly. Good. Yeah. Good news for women's front runner Hella Carlson, a partner to take some of the load off her shoulders. Scott Allen is her escort. A minute 50 seconds behind Carlson are Nikki Dimitopoulos and Barry Hartman, saving precious energy by being tucked safely away in the middle of this pack. Twin cam skater Scott Baldwin acts as the scout for the men, skating leisurely 30 yards ahead of the field. It's a uh, people are tired. Some people are already starting to feel some cramps. So, what mile are we at? 32. It was fast first hour. I was having a hard time. It's pretty good. It's still slick though. It's really slick. The majority of the Athens to Atlanta course is really a pleasure to skate on. Smooth pavement, open roads through the hills of Georgia. But there is one section of the course that tests not only the participants' nerves, but also their patience. It's called Gatorback. A six-mile stretch of teeth-chattering, joint-jarring, wheel-chewing pavement that can only be described as an unpleasant experience. Now, tell me what it's doing to you physically. Well, it's vibrating on my knees, which hurts. And I have a blister, a hot spot developing, and it's vibrating on that. But I'm going anyway. Uh, hey, what's up? Uh, big pain, big pain. If you were ever to put your hand across a gator's back, what would it feel like? Something like this. Exactly. <laughs> Can you feel it shooting up? Oh no, because my like my feet are numb at this point. They are. <laughs> it, it happens. You skate on this, and your feet get numb, and, and you don't. But that's you know, right. So it's, it's fine. It's only six miles of it. Though. Yeah, we're, I'm practically finished. Bumpy roads on one part of the course, slick roads on all of the course right now, and those slick roads do offer expected dangers, but also change the style which a skater strides creating different stress points, possibly leading to an early demise. At the 38-mile checkpoint, Dan Berger is the first to hear the cheers of support in downtown Tecula. This point also serves as the finish line for those skaters just going the 38-mile distance. 20 seconds behind, Dan Shalaski leads the chase pack of skaters through town. Eight minutes behind the lead men, the first women enter Decula. Dimitopoulos and Hartman are here, but former leader Hella Carlson is nowhere to be found. So the new women's leaders are Nikki Dimitopoulos at the front, Barry Hartman in the blue in second position here, and Sue Wright with a knee brace fourth in line. We did finally catch up with Hella Carlson and discovered she made a wrong turn just before the last checkpoint and is now playing catch up with the help of two others. Many miles back, we find a member of the team in training. 51-year-old Bruce Cleland is the president, CEO of an investment management firm based in Towson, Maryland. He's also a husband and father of four. 13 years ago, his daughter, Georgia, was diagnosed with leukemia. She's a special little girl for lots of reasons. And we, uh, she has a lot of things in her life that she can't succeed at. But uh, one of the things we make a great fuss of is the team and training event. Fuss indeed. Spurred on by his daughter's illness, Bruce created the entire team and training concept, 
and launched one of the most successful sports-oriented fundraising programs in America. Yes, I just launched Nathan's June for this event. In exchange for members reaching certain fundraising goals, Team and Training teaches people how to skate, bicycle 100-mile century rides, and run marathons. It is the signature program of the Leukemia Society of America. A friend of our family has leukemia, was diagnosed about a year and a half ago, and uh, it looked like a good thing to get involved with. You feel so helpless, and it's uh, something that we felt that we can do to help the cause and raise some money. All team members skate for an honored patient, a leukemia victim whose courage in the face of this dreadful disease provides inspiration to the athletes to complete their fundraising goals and finish the event. Katie Chamberlain from Oakton, Virginia. She's 11 years old. She's been through two bouts of chemotherapy. She's in remission right now. She's doing really well. Let's skate for her. Well, at, at this stage, we really still don't talk about cure. What we talk about is, is uh, patients uh, who are holding remission. And uh, my daughter, for instance, is now holding, has held remission for 13 years. We started this program seven years ago. We had 8 to 10 percent chance of success in remission. And now we're getting 60, 70, 80 percent chances since TN training first began. So, yes, we are making a difference. In 1998, Team and Training's 23,000 members will raise a record $50 million to battle the ravages of leukemia. Uh, you know, obviously we had, we had the, the, the dream and the germ of the idea that, that took hold. Um, the event, as you see it today, um, belongs to a, a very big group of people. They've taken that little idea and turned it into something really wonderful.